years ago at Red Drexel. Hi, hi. Hi. It's been a while. Hey, Joanna. Nice to see you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. everybody hello hello, hello Joanna. Joanna. <laughs> and now this we see a... helen we're not just oh, helen is there uh, hey helen oh, hi. Hey. Hey. Hi, hi my camera is working so hi, that's diane, <laughs> diane carr is with us now and peggy hickman mm -hmm. i want to say this is a nice sort of full circle thing joanna lebov was one of my professors at penn oh my god, god. <laughs> oh god loud and clear Oh, that's nice. Wow. That is so nice. And her sister. And uh, her sister was one of my, was both, I think both my kids had her for elementary school. <laughs> oh, nice. Very nice. What, kindergarten, kindergarten, first grade, something like early, early on. It's a small world. Yeah. Well, Philly, right? West Philly. Miriam, are you planning to give us any quiz at the end? Um, because I'm ready with my pen and everything. Yeah, you should be ready okay. with your pen. It's, okay. um, the quiz is not at the end. The, uh, the, the, the right quiz end. is all the way through. That's okay. right. That's what I'm saying. Get your coffee. Get ready. Yep. Wake you up, everybody. Get started. All, all right. right. I'm going to find mm -hmm. my pen. All right. Let me just say that um, welcome, everyone. Formal A formal welcome to everyone. We're delighted to have you. The title of our TESOL conversation session today is called Affective Filter, Making Students Ready to Learn. And we are delighted to have uh, Dr. Miriam Oppenheimer. No, Dr. Oh, I'm sorry, Miriam Oppenheimer with us, who's been teaching ESL since 1989. And she's been a professor, an adjunct professor in, in Temple's um, Intensive English Learning Program and Community College for 16 years. Um, she has been working hard as an ESL specialist at the online world of learning. If you've never found out about that, check. I, I encourage you to check it out. Um, she, where she created an asynchronous course on affective filter for a hundred Nepali teachers. And if you know anything about Nepal, you know that, that Nepal is a country with tremendous, tremendous needs. Now, we don't know why, but we're gonna find out from Miriam why she wears a lot of purple every day. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, yes, and she um, she's gonna let us in on that little secret. And she, um, she wants us to know that she is a returned Peace Corps volunteer, which is in my mind, a big, big, big deal. So she loves questions. So as you have questions, hi Debbie, please write them down. And uh, hello, Mr. Zaleke. I'm sure I messed up the pronunciation of your name. If you, un if you unmute, we can hear the proper pronunciation of your name. Unmute. You're muted. Hey, Debbie. Uh, your pronounce is correct, actually. The lake. Mm -hmm. You know, every once in a while in life, you just get a little lucky. <laughs> yeah. That's all I could say about that. Mm -hmm. So, welcome, uh, Professor Oppenheimer, and we're ready to get started uh, whenever you're ready. Without further ado. All right. I'm uh, super glad to see everybody. I'm so happy that it's not like one person or like a thousand, which I figured anything was possible. So this looks like a really nice manageable group of people. And I'm really glad to see you. Um, I did not know that I was gonna have to explain the whole purple thing, but let's just say there is a purple thing um, where I basically wear purple every day. Um, and it doesn't have to be all purple or only purple, but it's always something. So um, anybody else? I know that uh, Joanna LaBeouf loves purple. I do, it's very soothing. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And I know Lynn, royalty. Lynn likes black. Francie likes purple, right Francie? Yeah. So uh, I've seen Linda in some purple now and again. <laughs> nice water bottle. <laughs> all right. So uh, yeah, I do want you guys to have a pen and there is a prize at the end uh, that will be sent to the winner or winners uh, via email in case there's a tie or something. So if you have a pen or paper, uh, I think you're gonna want it. 
and um, that'll be more fun for you. And if you're just like, hey, it's Friday night, I'm not writing anything, that's fine. That's totally um, gonna work out great for you also. I hope, <laughs> all things considered. So I'm gonna get started with my slideshow. Hey, Sherry. And here we go. So I made you guys this slideshow, um, but uh, frankly, I didn't make it exclusively for you. I made it before for my Nepali teachers and then I tweaked it for you guys. So here we have the picture of effective filter um, and it's just a picture um, and that's the title of this. So uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the expression effective filter, this gives you a little moment to go like, oh, I know what a filter is, right? And so this is like a clue as to what effective filter is. So now you're intrigued and titillated, right? All right, let's say that I call that this was. So we're gonna play a game. You might like a pen and paper to follow along. And I just wanna put this out there. Like I am not the expert on this, um, we are all experts. We are all experts in the field and we're all, <laughs> I agree with you, Sarah. I was actually gonna say something similar. Um, we are all experts. And so I'm gonna take a lot of input from people and we definitely have a nice manageable group of people. And so we can do it. So this is the first um, thing you're gonna write is what do you think the effective filter is when we're talking about pedagogy, education, something like that, right? And so you can win a point if you're in the bright ballpark, okay? And I did cite my source, um, cause I don't wanna get sued. Uh, Stephen Krashen, maybe you've heard about this whole book and things like that. So they're applying it to second language acquisition, but it's clearly for any kind of education for math, English, science, social studies, you know, anything you want to teach. So um, if you have other types of teachers in your school environment, this is information that I think that ESL teachers are kind of the best at, and maybe other disciplines are less good at it. So sharing this information with them and letting them know, hey, there's actually a word for this. Um, could be um, enlightening to other people in education. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys two minutes to write what do you think it is in your own words. Um, we don't write in the chat box. You're writing it on paper. Oh. Thank you for clarifying. I'm looking at your faces and a lot of people look like they're done. Um, I, I love uh, the song that goes with what um, Mac wrote in the chat. It's a state of emotion, right? That's a song <laughs> that made me think of that. And I see some other people uh, <laughs> in, the, in the chat. So uh, yeah, all students have effective filters, totally. Thanks, Sherry. Nice to see you. So um, I don't know, should I keep checking the chat? It's a little distracting, but. No, oh, let me handle that. Okay, thanks. If there's any, if I'm on a need to know basis, let me know. All right, so you see that it's a filter, right? And here's a picture of a filter. And it says information doesn't get into the student's brain efficiently, why? And so I made a meme, yay me, I'm 53, I made a meme. <laughs> and um, it is getting in there, but it's sullied before it gets in there. The information is not pure anymore once it gets into the student's brain. And so our question is why? 
So I just, for full disclosure, want to let you know the slideshow is adopted from a presentation I did for the online world of learning. It's an asynchronous course for English teachers in Nepal, and they have something like the Penn TESOL East, which is called NELTA, the Nepali English Language Teachers Association. And um, this is their thing. Um, I'm happy to take questions about any of this afterwards. And that's what you need to know about me is I love questions. All right, I can't see this. Studies show that relaxed students learn better, learn faster and retain the information longer. I cited my source here. And that's the whole idea of effective filter is something comes between the information you're giving and the information that students are receiving. It's blocking it in some way. Yes, there's holes in it like a filter. So some of the information is getting through, but all of it isn't getting through correctly. And so how do we resolve that is they need to be relaxed. So what are these barriers or what are these filter things? So here's um, another time where you guys have an opportunity. Um, here's where you're gonna write again. And I would like you to write, see if you can guess any one of these. The wording doesn't have to be the same, but can you guess any one of the ones that I'm gonna have? So there's four, you gotta try to guess one. But if you guess all four, that's awesome. Four barriers? Four barriers to learning a second language or learning anything, right? Biology, chemistry, whatever. Do you want us to throw out the answers? I want you to write it on a piece of paper, okay. not, not okay. in the chat. Okay. Write it on paper. Okay. Thank you for that really good question. All right, it's the honor system, but give yourself one point if you have something in the ballpark of this. If it's close enough and that it's honor system, if you think it's close enough, like that's what you meant, you totally get a point for what any ones of these that you get. No interest, no motivation, right? The students just are not interested. No confidence, they're scared. Um, afraid to speak, afraid to try, afraid of making mistakes. Teachers inappropriate teaching, this encompasses so many things, doesn't it? It could, not in your case, of course. And negative emotions about the target language. So give yourself points for every one of these that you got. And now uh, I would like anybody to write in the chat or just speak up if you're courageous, something that you have that's different than these four things, because these are just four of them. Does anybody have something different? Yes, I'll put it in chat. Good, insufficient practice. People will laugh at me. I think people will laugh at me as no confidence. You could get it for no confidence. Lack of opportunity, that sounds like teachers inappropriate teaching. Oh, physical need is good. Um, time stress seems like uh, teachers inappropriate teaching. Not willing to work, that seems like no interest, no motivation. Distracted, that seems like no interest, no motivation. Multitasking attention seems like teachers inappropriate teaching. Language anxiety is no confidence. So a lot of these are no confidence, right? 
Lack of technology. That's interesting. That's a good one. Learning disability is important. Lack of resources is important. Negative emotions about the target languages. You want to keep your native culture and language. Not knowing vocabulary sounds like the teacher's inappropriate teaching. Being introverted, I think that's no confidence. Am I wrong, Cherry? Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's the same. Yeah. Recent emotional upheavals or stress. That seems like negative emotions of some kind, right? Lack of understanding content. To me, that's the teacher's inappropriate teaching. Great job, you guys. So um, everybody give yourself some points. Did anybody get four points? Three? Linda, awesome. Five points? Wonderful. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Good, Helen, I see you. No, Cherry got see. one. That's great. All right. I hope a lot of people got three or two or one. I hope everybody at least got something. All right. Great job to those people. All right, I'm going to move to the next slide. Um, is that okay? Yeah. All right. So this one says, uh, we're starting with number one, no interest or motivation. So again, a, a lot of the things that you guys listed in the chat could definitely qualify as no interest or no motivation. So how can we generate interest, especially for EFL or ESL students, because that's what this conference is, but really it's for anybody, right? Okay, it's for anybody. So here, of course, you're gonna try to write something, but wait just a second. That's nice, Francie, I love it. Um, and this is the direction I wanted to go just as an idea. A list of uses of English in the future. Okay, for example, you might marry a British person. You might find a lost Australian. You might play a video game. Now is when I want your ideas um, and you guys can put them in the chat. What other ideas do we have? Interesting material, find out their goals, right? That was mine, right? Any other things, just brainstorm in the chat right now. Nice. Jamboard work, topics that interest them. Boring, but future uses of university and work. You might get a better job, give them choices, watch movies in English. Picture of Germany, find their passions, gamify. Woo, I'm going to get to that. Let them bring materials to class like show and tell. Awesome. Order at restaurants in English. Great motivation. Fun music video connections with classmates. See, I knew you guys were the experts. Wonderful. Pen pals, TED Talks, multimodal opportunities to engage, connect with grandkids, so good. Oh, yeah. Share their experiences from their home countries. Wonderful. These are so good, you guys. You might travel, community building. Right to a celebrity, love it. We could do this oh. all day, couldn't we? You guys are doing a great job right chatting with Americans, place. Sherry. <laughs> great, so all of these are wonderful examples of motivating things, exciting book, to use in class, have them conduct a survey outside the class in a group, great. All of these are super, super motivating. What great options. I wanna give you guys two minutes to read through the participants. Um, you probably know, but if you click on the square of the chat, you can see them all at the same time. You don't have to scroll up and down, it's a little easier. So um, if you wanna just, I'm gonna give you two minutes to read. These are so good. Love it. Is everybody good for technology? 
Mm -hmm. Awesome, great job. Everybody give yourself a point for everyone that you wrote in the chat. All of those are point worthy. Aren't those great? What a great list of things. Fantastic. Anybody want to make a comment at this juncture? All right, I'm going to move on. Yes, love it. Okay. So how can this list, once completed by your students, encourage your class? I'm curious if anybody actually made this list with the students. When I used to teach at the University of Sciences, my students wanted to be scientists and they were not into English. And so every day I came in with one of these things and I challenged them like, okay, I'm one person, you guys are 20 people, you know, we should be able to, you know, I'll come up with one and you guys come up with one every day. Um, and I thought it did encourage some of the classes. Anybody else try that? Like you make a list. Wonderful. Do you mean a list of things that would interest everybody in the class? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Or why do we need to learn this more, more specifically? Why do you need to learn English? Oh, you might marry a British person, right? All right, so number two is no confidence. And you guys made a lot of examples, really good examples of um, different ways that students have no confidence. They're shy, they're unprepared, they think they're unprepared, right? And so the question is how can students gain confidence? Because it really holds them back from learning anything, particularly English and so I got a list of eight. So here, your job is to write this on paper and see if you can guess any of these eight things um, to get points. So you can't be original this time. You have to guess mine. <laughs> you have to get in my brain. I'm gonna give you um, three minutes. One more minute. Ten seconds. Two, one, zero, stop. 
Yay, you guys did it. All right, let's see. If you get any of these, you get a point. Let's see how you did. Give easy assignments. Scaffold assignments. I remember I didn't know this word at first. Um, it means start easy and get a little bit e uh, more difficult and really break down the step-by-step -step scaffolding. Good. Discourage comparisons. This is true, not just in learning, but in anything, right? We should not compare ourselves to other people. And I have an expression, never compare your insides to other people's outsides, especially on social media, right? <laughs> Promote a positive mindset. I was thinking about the two M's, meditation and mindfulness. Notice progress, not perfection. I wanted to show you guys, I got this um, bracelet. It says, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. And I always show it to the students and tell them, look, you can't be perfect. That we learn from mistakes. I have a fun game that I play with the students about learning from mistakes where you can't have fun unless you make a mistake. And it's a really good motivator for the students. Like you have to make mistakes. Um, do one thing perfectly. So um, get them to do one thing that's completely perfect and be like, look, you can always fall back on this because you did this perfectly. And also realize that perfect doesn't exist, right? There's no such thing as perfect. I always tell my daughter this, as she's a bit of a perfectionist. There's no such thing as perfect. Nobody's ever perfect. You know, just do your best. Anybody get eight points? Did I contradict myself, Sherry? What do you think? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Anybody get seven, six, five, four, three, two, one? I got one, but yeah. I have other ideas. Okay, that's uh, obviously that's where I'm going next. Awesome, Sherry. So the next thing, of course, is if you got something different, could you please put it in the chat? I am not the expert, okay? We are all here together. Look at Linda, Helen, nice. Um, anybody wanna put anything in the chat that they think is quite different from these eight? Good, 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 good. Awesome. Oh, Virginia, I, that's amazing. Oh, yes. Good. Beautiful. Look how awesome these are. Good. Nice. Aha, uh -huh. good Sarah Peterson. Beautiful, good, okay, yeah. When I use the L1 intermittently, that adds comedy to my class. <laughs> Eat a banana. <laughs> awesome. What's an L1? Awesome. Your first language. Oh. Good. Someone said, eat a banana. The potassium helps you combat nerves. Sherry's teaching this class now. Thanks, Sherry. Appreciate it. Oh, sorry. I <laughs> know, I'm happy. Good, good. Uh, let me give you guys uh, one minute to read through your friends. Uh, wonderful, wonderful um, participation. Good, Becca Levy. Yeah. Hey, Linda, don't you kind of agree with everyone, though? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I especially, I guess especially. I do. 
I do practice what Becca and Helen wrote. Awesome. I think it's really important to create a sense of community in the classroom Wonderful. and give, give positive uh, feedback and encouraging words, both privately and publicly. Awesome. Know? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Francie. A compliment sandwich is you say something nice and then you give your criticism and then you say something else nice. That's a key of management. Great. These are so good. I wanted to uh, give you guys a minute to read all these, but you're still typing. Is everybody having fun reading these? Yes. All right, beautiful. Shall I move on? Number three? Yeah. Yes. One more thing in the chat. How to burst out the chat box. You, there's a little square in the top right, Jody. There's an X, mine's red, and next to it's a little square. And so you can make it bigger. Do you see it? All right, goodbye chat. All right, number three is teachers inappropriate teaching methods. I thought you might have a lot of fun brainstorming about this. Um, obviously you don't do any of these things, but we do hear about them on a regular basis if we listen to our students. So um, like these are things we're gonna try to avoid. I have 11. Um, I thought it was kind of fun to think about, like, don't do this, right? Things that we shouldn't do. And I did see some people uh, mention those earlier um, in the slideshow. So um, go ahead and write as many as you can in three minutes. In your paper, on your paper. Write these on your paper. Cheers, Lynn. Cheers. <laughs> One more minute.
All right. So I had fun uh, making this list because I have two high school students at my house and they were very excited to tell me every terrible thing that's ever happened to them in their entire lives. Um, but uh, please give yourself points for any of these that you can guess. Come on. There you go. Obvious one with the picture of the teacher with the stick. Super important. Screaming and shouting. I saw Joanna Labove had that one. Going too fast, not allowing students time for responses. Lots of punishments. Embarrassing the students. So especially screaming and shouting in front of the other students. Doing boring activities. Interrupting students to correct or help them. This might be controversial. Just talking in a boring voice. Talking for more than 15 minutes at a time and vocabulary out of context. Also might be controversial, this last one. Um, so give yourself a point for any ones of those. I think they're generally not too controversial. Does anybody wanna say anything about that? Um, yeah, I usually ask students, um, how they want to handle, do they want to be corrected, you know, Beautiful. and how they want to be handled. And some students will tell me, you can correct me once per class. Nice. <laughs> you know, others say not at all. And I remember one semester not correcting two individuals the whole time and finding out at the end that they had both been diagnosed with a low dyslexia and they had been badgered, you know, um, with corrections. And so um, getting to know them lets us know what, you know, is if we think of them as clients coming to us and this is a business, um, we, you know, we may be experts, but not at the way they learn. So we could find out from them what helps them the most. And sometimes it does help to catch them right in them when they're saying something to make the adjustment with their permission, you know. Wonderful. I love your nuance. That's fantastic. Great. Anybody else? Great. Good, good, good. So yeah, the racism, sexism, homophobia, or any kind of preference for some students or injustice over uh, one student or another, super important, right? Great job, great job. All right, I don't want to dwell on this forever. Um, do you? No. We could do this all day. I, I don't think we should dwell on this. Let's let's move on to what the positive stuff, okay? All right. So some negative emotions are against the target language. If you're speaking generally, we're talking about English, or there can be negative emotions about chemistry or math, or you know. People have math anxiety and things like this. And where do they get these negative emotions? Maybe from news, movies, from TV show, or from their parents. Um, so that's um, interesting to think about. So I'm gonna start out with the first question. Why would students have a reason to dislike Americans, Australians, British people, or the government of those countries? Um, you can just think about this. We're not writing right now. We're just thinking about this because this would this could go on infinity time. Even though Trump is out of office, just kidding. <laughs> this uh, this could go on infinity time. So I'm not gonna dwell on this too much, but the fact is that people do, right? So Miriam, do you want us to answer verbally? No, I just want you to think for a minute. Okay. You don't have to write or think. I mean, write or anything. Just the fact that it is a thing, right? Even though they came here, they still might not like it. Okay, second thing is why would students have a positive prejudice for their home language, right? Of course, so many would, and so many other languages are so beautiful and wonderful.
All right. And the third one, have you ever explicitly discussed this problem in your class? Like you came right out and said, uh, I know you hate Americans, or I know you're, you know, Spanish is a vastly superior language than English, or, you know, anything like that. Does anyone want to volunteer um, a little story about how that went? Nice, Francie. Let's see if anybody else wants to. I, I can volunteer a story, Miriam. Awesome. I uh, encourage my students to make sure that their children remain bilingual and tell them how important that is. Yes. And so I want to show them that I have a respect for their, their culture and their language. But I tell them that English is a weapon. I, I have immigrant students. So if they wanna get a good job, they're gonna need English. And if there's a bunch of people trying to get a job and they don't this student doesn't speak very well you know in English then you know that's going to be bad for him or her awesome so we're looking for um sort of the op the the way that you started with that is really really good like they you know talking about bilingualism and how being bilingual is a tremendous asset is really good for the positive prejudice for their home language anybody else um, did, did, did you talk about this in your actual class? Um, for the, can I answer the third question? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, what, what I've discussed with my students in terms of, um, negative feelings about the U S government is we've discussed gun laws, you know, and then mass shootings and, you know, so why does the US government let things like this happen? And so, you know, like I've explained the controversy over gun laws. And, and then I, I ask them uh, if there are things in their country or with their government uh, that they don't like. Awesome. Just, awesome. A little awesome. bit of like common Balance. Ground, like right. no right. one's government is perfect, you know. Awesome. Thank you so much for volunteering, you guys. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna move on. All right, how do we solve these problems? Seven ways. Here's where you're gonna write again. Try to guess these seven ways of solving these problems. Okay. So you're trying to um, psychically guess what my seven ways are. Problems specifically? Uh, negative. Oh, yeah, good question. The problems are, thank you, these four problems. You're writing this on your piece of paper. Nice, Becca. Hi, Lin Lin. Thirty seconds. All right, thank you guys. 
Um, so this is um, the first one is fun, friendly competition like games. Okay. Um, so if you if you have games on your list or in some way competition or something on your list, give yourself one point. Um, these are games that I like to use. Find someone who. Um, often I do it with the present perfect. Um, I've done it with um, present continuous, simple present. I like to focus on a grammar point when I do that. Find someone who. I've never obviously present perfect. That's a lot of fun. Jeopardy, can do it with anything. Board games, you uh, need to be face-to-face -face probably to do most board games. Now you share examples. Can everybody just put one in the chat? Some game that has worked for you either. Um, can you put if it was virtual or live? Did you do it on Zoom, virtual or live? This is gonna be awesome. We're all gonna be emailing Linda Falaga. What's human bingo? <laughs> That's great. Nice. Nice. I think we're all gonna be emailing Helen and saying, what is that? Nice. Awesome. Great job, great job. Okay, so we're gonna be sharing, remember all of this is recorded so that uh, we can go back and look at this later. That's great. Telephone. I wonder if you could do telephone on Zoom. No, I guess probably not. Nice. All right, great job, guys. All right, how about watching funny things? This is from your previous list that you wrote. Maybe uh, you have this, give yourself a point if you had this. Jokes, movies, TV shows. These you can use these for vocabulary, grammar, spelling, listening, reading subtitles, phrasal verbs, pronunciation, writing, even test taking skills. If you're working on, you know, listening test taking skills or something like that, um, students love it. And you can totally just Google like um, ESL present perfect funny and find a YouTube video about that. You know, uh, everything <laughs> is out there and uh, ready for us to just take. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Songs, maybe you gave, give yourself a point if you wrote songs or music. Here are my examples, a song for remembering the subordinate conjunctions. Subordinate conjunctions, I love and I adore. There's after, although, as, because, and before everybody. If provided since, and unless, until, and then. There's whenever, wherever, and while, and where, and when. Uh, if you want the link to that song, I, I use that all the time. 
Song for prepositions, please don't bury me. A lot of really great prepositions. And that song is also good for parallelism and has some good vocabulary. Uh, write your own song, have students write their own songs. It's really fun. Um, now it's your examples for music or songs that you like to do. <laughs> yeah, Lynn, I do that too. Nice. Wonderful. Oh, too sad, Mac. All right, great job, great job. I'm gonna move on. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a minute to look at your friends, your new friends, your new best friends. Yeah, Linda, let them listen to a song while they're writing, right? Great, wonderful. Thank you so much for everybody's amazing participation. Uh, art projects, give yourself a point if you have art projects from before. Here are some of my ideas. Love this picture, right? Uh, these are my examples. Draw a scene from the reading. I do this all the time. It is so incredible. Um, I break them up into groups of three. One person has a dictionary, one person has the book, and one person's the artist. And so they all have a role and they draw a scene from the reading. It's super fun. Analyze art. Oh, it's a pink snail by a river. You know, why? <laughs> write a proposal. Um, if you have any actual artists in your class, you know, have them write up a proposal or for fundraising or something like that, or a grant writing. That's pretty, it gets uh, the certain, the right student, it gets them so excited. And how to, you know, the process essay, how to make art. They could do it as a video. They can do it as an essay. They can do it as a conversation, like a radio show. Um, students really get into that. Your examples of art projects. We're running out of time, so um, write them fast. Nice, nice, Linda. I just want to follow you around, Linda. And just do what you do. <laughs> wow. Awesome. So good. I'm fine. So Miriam, I hate to interrupt, but we are coming down to the six o'clock hour. We have yes. about five minutes. Yes. Uh, did you want to entertain questions now or should I put your email in the chat or both? Um, both. Did you want uh, to do the Peace Empress? Yes. Okay. okay. So I'll just go th through the last one, which is watching or making fun movies or TV shows. This is the very last one. Um, and um, somebody said commercial earlier. I remember when I was in uh, sophomore in high school making a fun, I made a commercial with my friend and I still remember it exactly in French, you know, my second language. So yeah, definitely 
making memes, making animations. I have this website that you guys might want to try. There's a website for everything, as I'm sure everybody knows, but we never have to invent anything. We can always just use these. And that is the end of our slideshow. Um, and I think there's a last, last, uh, yeah, and, and the end kind of slideshow. But yeah, you can use all of these. And that's the end of our slideshow. No, it isn't. Oh, yeah. And then the conclusion is just combine any of the above. Um, it's super fun to have like a song and a video or a how to write a song or any kind of combination art and, you know, combining them all. And that's the end of the slideshow. Thank you so much, Miriam. We do have a couple of questions. Love um, questions. A, a lot of thank yous and great presentation and <laughs> people just really saying it's so helpful, great illustrations. It really was a fantastic presentation. Very much exceeded my, present, my <laughs> expectations. Um, and uh, we did have one question, a couple questions here. One is, could we put the link in the chat? Which link was that? If the person could unmute. Yeah, that's the link that Miriam put in the slideshow about, uh, I don't know, animation or something. Okay, yeah, got it. But I guess since this is being recorded, but yeah, that would help if it's on in chat. Any other questions? I'm using the strategy called wait time. Well, I can you hear me? Or yeah, Joanna, go ahead. So Miriam, I just want to say thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. It was fun, enjoyable, and very, very interesting. And I just, I loved it so much. It was just fabulous. You did a great job. That means a lot coming from you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miriam. Thank you. Miriam, I saw Steve crashing yesterday at three o'clock. He, uh, he, he, was, he was the ending plenary speaker at New Jersey TESOL. And I just wanna say, I think he would be so incredibly proud of you because you're reiterating all the theories that he still believes in. He said that he's going back in time as we all do, trying to figure out what to keep and what to get rid of. And he's reading his old work and it just, it resonates with him all over again. So you're just reinforcing his theories and and I mean I can tell you for myself I use his theories to guide my work with my undergrads um, who are going to be teachers hopefully one day soon and my own students at Community College of Philadelphia so you're definitely you're preaching to the choir but so much more because we need to be reminded of what these strategies are and um, and how to best kind of refresh them in the new age so true. Thank you, guys. So uh, I can hang out um, on on Zoom if uh, anybody wants to shoot the breeze with me on a Friday night. Um, if anybody else wants to, but thank you guys so much. This is a lot more fun than I thought it would be. <laughs> I thought it would be scary. <laughs> Have a happy. Memorial Day, everybody. Yeah. Happy Memorial Day. Day. We started our weekend out really well, Miriam. Thank you so much. Bye bye and thank you. Wonderful Take presentation. Care. Mac, do you want to make me the host? You are, everyone is a host. Don't you Everyone's think so? a host? Nice. Yeah, I think so. Check. No, it's just you. Okay, so let me go to participants. I want to end this meeting, but uh, wait a minute. We're still recording. Yeah, we are still recording. I know. So I go to Mariam Moore. So yes. start with your co-host. Can Hold we on, end the recording first? Co-host. <laughs>